Well, hi out there. This is Marvelous Mark, right here in the flesh. And you know, I don't have a lot of time to make videos like this anymore, but this is kind of a special occasion since... Oh, excuse me there. Um, because it... What I just, well, I just, what just got added to the WWE Network in the last, in the last couple of days is kind of the holy grail for wrestling historians and longtime wrestling fans like myself. What they, what they added on there back on on Tuesday this week was the last battle of Atlanta, which was held in Atlanta's Omni back in October twenty third, nineteen eighty three. And the two combatants were Tommy Wildfire Rich against Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer. And at that time, this was kind of the preeminent feud in wrestling. Not just in World Championship Wrestling, Georgia Championship Wrestling, whatever you want to call it, the NWA. It, it, it kind of transcended a lot of things. And this was a feud that had been brewing for about a year and a half. They, it, it kind of started about, about the early part of 1982 and it and it just kept going bigger and bigger and bigger. They they spilled each other's blood from pillar to post and across the the country. And this this is this was the blow off match to the feud. And what what made this match so special is that it wasn't just a cage match. It had it had a had a rough on the top. And and Shawn Michaels even said it himself that this this particular contest was the Inspiration what for what no, would be would have would have been become known as the Hell in a Cell match and, and if anybody knows about the Hell in a Cell match it would be Shawn Michaels and he was in the first one against the Undertaker. But as as far as this match goes, it, there there's another stipulation to this. Precious Paul Ellering, who was Sawyer's manager at the time. He he was put up in a bird cage above the ring, so he well, obviously he, he wouldn't have been able to fare any interfere anyway. But, but I just think just for, to be on the safe side, they put him in his own bird cage at and kind of, kind of off to off to the side of the ring. And if Sawyer were to lose the match, Ellering would have to take on Ole Anderson at at the end of the match. But. Most people, a lot of people only remember Paul Ellering as being the manager of the Road Warriors, the Legion of Doom, but he was also an accomplished wrestler in his own right. And and when you talk about the Legion of Doom, I mean, yeah, it's mo most closely associated with the Road Warriors and all, but it was actually a stable in the, like the latter, latter part of 1983. Yeah, granted, it didn't last all that long, but... I mean, you, you look at some of the people that were in this group. You had Jake the Snake Roberts. You had King Kong Bundy. You had you you had the Spoiler. You had a young Matt Bourne and Arn Anderson. The Iron Sheik was in this group, and even the original Sheik himself, Ed Farhat. But, but as far as the match itself, I mean, it, this was it. Really was a the match itself only won about thirteen minutes, which. Which, which sounds about right, considering the intensity that this feud had, and and just the intensity of the match itself. I mean, he, Rich and Sawyer went; they pretty much threw the kitchen sink at each other. I mean, I mean, Rich even hit Sawyer with a couple of low blows, and both men bled early and often in this match. I mean, I I've seen this match twice now. Um. I mean, we're we're talking about three minutes into the match, and Sawyer, or excuse me, Tommy Rich was already bleeding like a stuck pig, and eventually, both Sawyer would be wearing that crimson mask itself. But God, how, how great would this match have been if if it wasn't at a house show? And God, how how, how exciting could Gordon Sully have made this match, considering he was the head announcer on World Championship Wrestling at the time? But I mean. I mean, if you if you like bloodbaths and great balls and shit like that, oh, you would you had it in this match. I mean, I mean, this, this was just a bloodbath, and what you might have expected considering the intensity that this feud entailed. But but as far as far as the match, it, I mean, there, there was a good amount of storytelling in this, and Tommy Rich ended up winning the match. 
I mean, there, there was no referee on the inside. So, in a way, it was kind of a Texas death match, in a way, but but there was also a pinfall, too, so. So, it was just kind of, it just kind of incorporated both things into that match, but. Then afterwards, Paul Erling took on Ole Anderson, one of the, one of the few times in his career that Ole Anderson was actually a baby face in, in this, but. You know, Ellering ended up getting his comeuppance in this match. But afterwards, Jake the Snake Roberts came into the ring and and he and he started beating Ole Anderson with a belt and that and I mean Rich Reg and Sawyer before they, they 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 both got helped out of the ring just because it that match was just so brutal. I don't mean brutal as I mean it was actually a brutal match. I mean it wasn't wasn't brutal to watch. It wasn't wasn't like well, watching Divas matches from, I mean, God, even as recently as about a couple of years ago. But anyway, as far, as far as what I thought of this match, I mean, I mean, as far as what happened afterwards, I mean, Buzz Sawyer would eventually turn babyface. And I, I, what, what really got me about, I mean, the aftermath of this, of this is that there was no mention of it at, like the the following week on World Championship Wrestling. There's no there's no follow up to this as to who actually won. I mean, yeah, I, w I could have assumed that Tommy Rich would have won this match. I mean, I mean to win the feud and all, but but you you didn't. Gordon Soli didn't. Even, they didn't even talk about this match at, at, at the. I mean the, the like the the following week. It's just like. Sawyer would eventually become babyface because I mean because of his brother Brett who was, who was wrestling there at the same time and and Sawyer and Rich actually teamed up at uh, I mean a little bit afterwards like I mean that that was kind of the part I didn't get but I mean it's, it's just one of those things there there's just no no follow up on that it, it, but. As far as what happened to them afterwards, I mean, but Buzz Sawyer, I mean, he was a crazy son of a bitch inside the ring and out, and and unfortunately, he died in February of 1992 of a drug overdose. I mean, I, I, but and as far as far as Tommy Rich goes, he, I mean, he's still alive. He's about 60 years old now, but and one thing you can say about about the. The after effects of this match is, I think I thought it it, sh it shortened both their careers by a great deal. I think I mean I mean just the feud itself. But anyway, that's kind of my thoughts about this match. I I I'm very happy I finally got to see this match. I'm sure a lot of old school, more old school wrestling fans are closer to my age. I'm sure they're if they haven't seen it by now, I'm sure they probably will and. I tell you what, I wasn't disappointed by seeing it at all. It it kind of met all my expectations and then some. So, anyway, this is Marvelous Mark, and hopefully I'll be able to do more videos like this in the future. It depend kind of depends on how on my job situation. I put in for another a different position at my work ho with better hours. So hopefully, hopefully I'll get that job. I should know about it by the end of next week. Hopefully and. Hopefully I'll be able to do more of these. So until then, this is the Marvelous One, Marvelous Mark, saying good goodbye for now.